Does distant starlight prove the universe is old? One of the most common questions that I uh, get asked when people find out that I'm a creation astronomer is what about distant starlight? How did God get the light from those distant galaxies to Earth in thousands of years that the Bible says were the, the age of the universe? Well, there are actually several different ways to get light to travel those enormous regions in a relatively short amount of time. Uh, one, one way is what's called an anisotropic synchrony convention. And that's a little bit like uh, time zones on the Earth. You know, I can leave uh, Kentucky at around 4 o'clock in their plane and arrive in Colorado at 4 o'clock without going infinitely fast or anything like that. And the reason is because time, the way time is defined on Earth, we use a local time convention as we travel across the world. As long as I'm going west, that'll work. Well, a similar thing can be done in space, and in fact has been done since uh, ancient times. And so perhaps God is using that, that anisotropic time zone uh, model of zones out in space there. And so light can travel those enormous regions in no time at all. Light can be created with the star on, the day, on day four, and it can arrive on Earth on day four, you see, so it's not really an issue. But there are other creationists that have proposed that God used uh, perhaps time dilation, uh, gravitational time dilation, for example. Einstein tells us that time can flow at different rates in different environments. That's something that we've demonstrated with atomic clocks. We know it's true. So perhaps time flows more slowly on Earth than it does in the distant region of the universe because the Earth is in a gravitational uh, well. That is, it's near the center of a finite amount of galaxies and therefore time would flow more slowly on Earth than it does out in the distant regions of space. And so light can trickle in at its own slow rate, but on Earth only thousands of years elapses. That's an interesting possibility. There's also an offshoot of that called uh, Carmelian physics that would allow basically the same thing to happen, but it adds an extra dimension to, uh, to a general relativity. So these are interesting possibilities. But we should also keep in mind the possibility that God may have used a supernatural mechanism. After all, God is not bound by the laws of nature as we are, especially during the creation week when God was doing things in a supernatural rather than a naturalistic uh, way. And so that's certainly a possibility as well. It may be that we can't understand how an infinite God could do it, but that doesn't mean that he can't do it. He's after all infinite. One answer that we would not recommend using is that God simply created the beams of light already on their way. And the reason we don't uh, think that that's a good answer is because we see things happen in space. We see stars explode, for example. And if, that, if God just created the beam en route, then that means that the star that we saw explode never really happened. God just painted a picture of that explosion along this light beam, uh, when in fact the star never exploded, never even existed. And so I don't think that God is going to create pictures of fictional events out in space there. And if he did out in space, why not here on Earth? We really couldn't trust our senses if God created light beams that, that don't really come from their source. So I don't think that's the best explanation. And another thing I want to point out, though, is that the Big Bang, the alternative to biblical creation, also has a similar type of problem, a light travel time problem of its own. It's called the horizon problem. And basically it has to do with the cosmic microwave background that we see uh, streaming from the distant regions of the universe. We find that it's very uniform. And that shouldn't be because in the Big Bang model, uh, it should have different temperatures at different places. Why is it so uniform? Obviously light energy had to travel from the, the hotter regions to the cooler regions to equilibrate those temperatures, but there hasn't been enough time. Even in 13.7 billion years, there's not enough time for light to travel from one side of the visible universe to the other. And so that's a light travel time problem for the Big Bang. It seems to me that if the alternative to biblical creation has the same type of problem as biblical creation, then you can't argue that distant starlight somehow disproves biblical creation in favor of the Big Bang. And after all, God is omniscient. He could have used a mechanism that we do know about, or he could have used a mechanism that we don't know about. But it's not a problem for an infinite God to get light from distant galaxies to Earth in thousands of years.